Hi and welcome back to Bike Speed. So this week we're dealing with this Trek Road bike. Uh, you can see from that initial shot there that the rear derailleur has broken off of its hanger. So we're going to address the hanger. We're going to wax the chain and clean up the drivetrain and do the handlebar tape and a service and a cable on this bike. So, you know, initially it looks far worse than actually it was. So you can see here, we're just removing the chain. We're getting everything apart. You can see how thick the, this, this bike had a very strange oil on it, actually. I'll address that first. I mean, you can see how thick that grease is on that cassette there. And yet it was dry as a bone. When you touch that, no residue came off on your fingers. It was a very strange oil that just sort of built up a layer on there. It would be great for anti-corrosion, but it wouldn't lubricate the chain or the chain set or any of the components. It just, you know, it's a very strange grease that was on there. Probably a dry lube of some description, I would have thought. But anyway, we're going to strip this bike right down because we are going to wax the chain. So we need to get all that residue of grease and oil or whatever it is off of there before we can really put a wax chain on there. You want a wax chain to run as smooth, you know, smooth as butter. So we're stripping the bike down, which as you know, we always do. We had a slight problem with the rear brake on this bike. Uh, it was sticking on itself, it wasn't, and you can see the corrosion on this front brake here, how the bolt was corroded. So we'll clean all that corrosion off, we'll grease that and lubricate it, which will show the lubricating process. And so this is the rear brake that I say was just sticking, it was just it was just holding itself on the closed position and wasn't quite releasing, you can see there. That's actually very common on a rear brake on a road bike. Often you don't even notice it, you just get a little bit of dragging on the brake and uh, you won't really be aware of it because it gradually releases itself. We had a frame bolt here missing. We had the broken derailleur hanger. We had to order a derailleur hanger for this bike. We didn't have that one in stock, so it was just a few days delay for the customer. That enabled us to sort of start this process of filming. Handlebar tape, so off came the old handlebar tape before we stripped down the chain set and get everything in the degreaser. And then we go through this sort of, once we've stripped a bike down, we then go through this lengthy process of degreasing all the components lubricating them, cleaning them up, lubricating them up and then before we get them back on the bike. So you can just see there the broken derailleur hanger. Initially it looked like there was a whole world of trouble for the derailleur but the actual derailleur itself was actually fine. There didn't appear to be any bends in it or any problems with it. Here you can see look I'm dabbing my hand this is the grease residue that was on the jockey wheels and you can see it does, doesn't, I mean my hands there although they're a little bit dirty they're not thick with grease and oil and I've already, you know, I've been stripping this bike down and I haven't washed my hands in between so yeah it's a very strange lubricant on this one but anyway these parts are now coming out of the ultrasonic cleaner we've got a water soluble degreaser in there so once it comes out of the degreaser we can then wash that degreaser straight off with uh, warm water which is what we're doing here so we just clean up all the parts get all the access old grease and oils off so you can see here we just do it we sort of do it in two or three runs we don't use any temperature in the degreaser on any anodized parts but we may use it you know warm it up for things like the cassette and the chain we'll, we'll whack the temperature right up on that we actually put the the cassette in with other components and ran that through twice because it was had such a thick buildup of grease and everything on there so we even do things like the skewers there you see they go through they're very prone to going rusty in the centers most new skewers aren't lubricated they're just put into a wheel put on the bike and it can actually get corrosion inside the hub of the wheel through a skewer that hasn't been lubricated so even those we're cleaning them up we're degreasing them and then we you know go through lubricating so this is the lubrication we're going to do the jockey wheels first we're using the premium grease there it's a nice thick consistency of grease and it just is beautiful for the bearings and such like we're then using a little bit of loctite here to hold the derailleur together and you know you don't want these to ever come loose so likewise you don't want to over tighten them because they're an aluminium and stainless steel bolt and an aluminium housing so it's very important to not overdo those we're using a very thin lubricant here on the pivot points of the derailleur we do that on the front and rear this is almost like water this this oil that we use on these pivot points it's a lovely oil for that and the same on the brake on the pivot points all of the pivot points that oil then we're using a silicon grease here on the little slider for the spring of the brakes it's the only time i think we do use the silicon grease other than on rubbers on things like hubs but in the main servicing a little bit of silicon grease on there just helps that brake actuation and release and stops that stickiness that we had previously. So all the components are now greased and oiled. 
Now we just wax the chain. This is molten speed wax we're using. It's uh, heated up. We use a slow cooker for that, a little small slow cooker. Then we hang it to dry, uh, hang it to cool. Then we break down the waxes using this little roller here. And then we dust everything off with molten speed powder. People often say to me, why do you dust the cassette? It actually is supposed to help the wattage and the, the changeability of the new wax chain if you just dust it with molten speed powder. I think I read somewhere it's, it can give you an extra eight watts or something. So quite a you know good process, to, a finishing process to your chain wax. And it's very important to dust it with your molten speed powder afterwards. It is the final finishing touch that makes the world a difference to a wax chain. It's not just putting it in your waxes at home and you know it's a proper process then that Molten Speed Powder and Molten Speed Wax and the Molten brand recommend so that's why we do that. A little bit of grease on the hub there before we put the cassette on. Talks up to 40 newton meters. You know you've heard me mention many times about talking and getting everything right. We've also greased that quick release skewer there. Now as you can see here look how tight these headset bearings are. Now this was quite intriguing because sometimes you'd replace them but in this instance all it was was the preloader on the bearing. As soon as I released that the flow on the handlebars was completely different. I could feel there was no play in the bearings that's what I'm doing here is just feeling how those bearings feel. Spinning them left and right to listen to them. I'm aware that there's sealed bearings in there they're not loose bearings and look at the difference. You know if you were trying to ride that bike with no hands before you wouldn't have been able to do it. That bike would have been constantly tramwaying down the road. You'd have been constantly putting little inputs in to keep the steering straight. So once we've just released that bearing preloader, steering's perfect on this bike and now we can pursue the frame. So we put a little bit of soap cleaner on this bike first, then we use our detailing brush we run along the frame to get all these sort of thickened debris parts off and then we use the big softy brush to really wash down the bike. The big softy that we use, this is a nylon, a thick nylon, like thick in bristles but soft bristles. It's very much like putting a sponge over the bike, but just slightly better than that in that it really works into the mud. And then we use a microfiber towel, which won't scratch the paintwork before we're now pursuing getting the bike back together. So on goes that new derailleur hanger. I never assume from fresh out of the packet that a derailleur hanger is straight. So what I'm just doing here, I just put the wheel in. I use the valve as my test spot because again, I don't know that the wheel is, is not buckled. So I just checked that that derailleur hanger was, was all true and square to the wheel. Now we can start to put the bike back. So we're just using a little bit of copper slip on the threads. Copper slip's very good for threads, especially on stainless steel aluminium because copper is slightly higher on the galvanic scale than your aluminiums. But the key ingredient of copper grease is the fact that it has anti-seizure and anti-corrosion properties within that grease. And that's the key that you're putting onto the threads is the fact that they then won't corrode so fast and won't seize in the holes and it just future proves your servicing. You know, if you're having a bike serviced every year and you're regularly replacing that, you're going to have no more issues with corrosion within that bike using that grease. So it's a good grease in your arsenal is your copper grease, for especially for these threads and things. So you can see here, we're really, really beginning to get this bike back together now. It's beginning to look good. We've got potentially a very interesting video coming out next week while we're working on the forks of this bike. It's a bike that we've stripped down for someone who's doing an Ironman and the preparation to his race there was absolutely key because we found a problem with that bike that would have been catastrophic for his race but we've solved the problem and we should be bringing that video to you next week. So we did put a new cable on the rear derailleur here but all the other cables on the bike appeared to be fine so we didn't replace any of those. It was fairly routine in the servicing part of this bike. It was just a case of really ironing out the issues with that rear derailleur. But you can see there that's now shifting gear perfectly with the fresh wax chain. None of that grease and debris on the bike anymore. Added a, a new bolt to the frame there to the, the one that was missing just to, to sort of make that bike just look a little bit nicer. And then one of the finishing touches was just to re-tape the handlebar tapes. So you can see there were just done that and finished it off with white tape, plugged the plug ends back in, and then we start running through the bike with a torque wrench. So we even torque up things like the brakes, as you just saw there, the levers, they all have a set torque. It really depends on whether you got aluminium or carbon fiber handlebars as to how tight you would do that. That does have a variant on the handlebars, but even things like this saddle, look how loose that was. You know, it's, it's simple things like that, that. If you're riding along, you'll get that road vibration. Your weight is all sitting on that saddle. Gradually it would come undone. Before you know it, you, your saddle would be, the clamp would be falling to bits on your ride and you would 
have to pick them up or ride home without your saddle. So um, this is the really the key reason why you should get your bike serviced and get it all torqued up and nice. So we just run right through the bike with a torque wrench. Final part is to pump up the tyres. But on pumping those tyres up, this front valve cap I noticed was damaged. It's quite a common problem where they're over tightened and then they split down the centre there. You can see how that's just split there. So we just replace it with a fresh new one. That's something I notice quite a lot when I do services on a bike is to replace the valve cap. Simple thing, but it makes the world of difference to how that bike is used and presented in the future. So as you can see from these before and afters, what a difference we've made to this bike. So thanks for watching. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. Please leave a comment in the comments below and we will see you next week.